Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. My name is Scott Reich, and this is Crime Talk, the most fact-driven, unbiased, true crime channel on the entire internet. First on the docket, a determination on the competency for Letitia Stauk. Second, an update on the young boy that was rescued at Mrs. Potato at the restaurant in Florida. And finally, our dumb criminal contestant of the day. Let's talk about it. Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Crime Talk. My name is Scott Reich. Thanks for watching. Now, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell so that you'll receive notifications of when we put up new content or go live. And as always, leave us a comment. Well, today is Tuesday. What does that mean? That's right. It's Crime Talks Tuesday Night Live. It's your program where we're answering your questions tonight. Join us 6 p.m. Mountain Time. And then immediately after that, we'll be doing our Tuesday Patreon Live where it's your show and you can actually call in if you're a Patreon member and we'll have a conversation about anything you want to talk about. Now, first on the docket, a determination on the competency regarding Letitia Stauk. For those of you who do not know, Letitia Stauk is the stepmother of 11-year-old Gannon Stauk who was found deceased last year, and Ms. Letitia Stauk has been charged with first-degree murder. Originally, the case was progressing when Ms. Letitia Stauk was arrested in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and she was being transported back. She apparently was able to get out of her handcuffs while they were in Wichita, uh, Kansas, and they had to spend a night there because of her attempted escape. Well, since Miss Letitia Stauk has been back, she has attempted to escape from the El Paso County Jail as well. One competency evaluation was done and they promptly found that Miss Letitia Stauk was competent. A second competency evaluation was done at the request of the defense and guess what? The doctor doing the evaluation, Dr. Jackie Grimmett, found that Letitia Stauk was in fact competent to proceed. Now, what does that really mean, okay? One can have mental health issues, but still be competent. Competent simply means that you know why you're there in the courtroom, who the players are in the courtroom, i.e. the judge, the prosecutor, and the defense counsel, what roles they play, what the possible penalties are, what the jury decides in this particular case. So if you know that, hopefully you're general education level uh, social studies classes taught you the role of a jury trial, guess what? You are competent to proceed. In this particular case, Letitia Stauk is now requesting for a hearing regarding a conflict with her attorneys. Miss Letitia Stauk has two public defenders assigned to her case. There's probably investigators assigned to this case as well. But anytime that you raise competency, you better be right. And in this particular case, the attorneys were incorrect. They initially raised competency, they found her competent. They had another evaluation done, found her competent. What does that do to the attorney-client relationship when one side of that relationship thinks that the other person's crazy or not competent, suffers from a mental defect or disease, and the other person saying, I'm competent, I'm ready to go. I said all along, if one wanted to determine if Letitia Stauk was competent, they simply had to read her letters that she wrote to the court. She clearly understood the proceedings that were taking place. She appreciated the seriousness of the offense. She understood the roles of her attorneys as well as the judge. That in and of itself made me think that the competency quest that the defense was going on may have been a delay tactic. It turns out it delayed the proceedings and it may have ruined the attorney-client relationship to the point where Letitia Stauk is now asking for new counsel. Just because you don't like your attorney when they're court appointed doesn't mean you get another one. It has to rise to the level where the client, here in this case, Miss Letitia Stauk, basically can't get along or can't work with the attorneys in some way. 
had lots of clients over the years, didn't particularly like me, didn't like the advice that I was giving them, but I was doing it in my best interest. And unless she wants to go out and hire her own attorney, she's going to get the attorney that the court appoints to her unless there's an actual conflict. And from what we've seen from the record thus far, nothing in there would warrant a conflict at this time. We'll continue to follow this case. The preliminary hearing has been set now for March 11th and 12th. This will also be a combined hearing for the proof evident presumption great, which is basically a fancy word for a bond hearing, which says that you will not get a bond if the court finds the proof is evident and the presumption great. Basically, the evidence is overwhelming and there's a very strong likelihood of conviction for the prosecution. That means Ms. Letitia Stauk will not be getting a bond after that hearing. Next on the docket, a quick update regarding the young boy that was rescued by an observant server at the Mrs. Potato restaurant in Orlando, Florida last week. As you may recall, the server noticed that the young boy sitting at the table with a grown man, another child, and a woman uh, had on a hoodie, a mask, and basically covering uh, the child's eyes. But the server clearly could tell that something was wrong and that the child looked like they were scared. The server put up a sign, are you okay? Ultimately, the police were called. We put that 911 call up. It's a little frustrating at how slowly they go, but it all turned out well. The 11 year old boy who was the uh, victim in this particular case is now in the protection of social services. And the police described a very horrific situation where the child would be basically placed upside down by his ankles. He was covered in bruises uh, when the police interviewed him. He was malnourished and literally probably would have died if the abuse would have continued. Now, the defendant, and we'll give him the presumption of innocence, Mr. Timothy Wilson, guess what? He's been married before, and his ex-wife has come forward and said, oh yeah, I left this guy, why? Because he was abusing my children as well. Kind of along the lines of past performance is indicative of future results. Unfortunately, nobody contacted the police before so that this guy couldn't be around any of the children. Fortunately, in this particular case, the child is going to be okay. Mr. Wilson is going to be prosecuted. And my guess is he will have a criminal record and will not be around children. If he is around children, guess what? The mother of those children will probably face charges for putting him in a dangerous situation, for sure, putting the children in a dangerous situation, which is a good reason why everyone should go to crimetalksearch.com. That's right, if somebody has a history of abusing children, that's gonna show up on a criminal background check. And if you sign up for that background subscription service, you will be able to find out if there's a criminal history and for what property records, marital records, all the types of things you wanna know the people that you're going to get involved with. Now, hopefully Mr. Wilson isn't gonna be around any children, hopefully isn't gonna have any more children, hopefully he's not gonna date anyone else with children, because clearly he can't help himself when it comes to abusing children. We'll give him the presumption of innocence, but it doesn't look good for him. Now, next on the docket, our dumb criminal contestant of the day. What's better than being able to tell a story about a dumb criminal? That's right, when there is in fact video. Please meet Cindy Falco de Corrado. Now, she is a 61-year-old resident of nearby Boynton Beach, but she refused to wear a mask at the Einstein's Brothers uh, store, and guess what? The manager called the police. When the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office deputies arrived, um, Miss D. Corrado uh, declared, quote, I'm an American and I'm allowed to breathe and it's against my religion and it's against the amendment. And she referenced purported legal citations proving that it was illegal to require masks inside a private residence as onlookers looked on in somewhat amazement. One onlooker actually said, shouldn't you be storming the Capitol? Now, the video shows the police officers arresting Ms. D. Corrado. 
where she's stating that she's not under arrest. Now, Ms. DiCarato, I'm telling you as a criminal defense attorney, you were under arrest. You were restrained. You were not free to leave. You were legally under arrest. She then claimed that she couldn't breathe and she went on and on about the fact that they were trespassing against her. You can't trespass in public. Well, needless to say, Ms. DiCarato was arrested, has posted a $2,000 bond, and has pled not guilty to the misdemeanor charge to which she has been charged, which was resisting and trespassing. Ah! Put your arms back. Stop resisting. Let go. I am not under arrest. Leave me alone. I am not under arrest. Ah! I can't oh, no. breathe. I can't breathe. Ah! I am not under arrest. You did not Judy, okay, just stand back on the you sidewalk, okay? You didn't say I was under arrest. No, I stand back on the sidewalk, in. please. Let go of me. Relax. No. Honey, come here. Get my purse. He's trying to steal my purse from me. Stop your purse, ma'am. Yes. Can Damn. you step back away? Ma'am, stand on the sidewalk. She's Stop it. Ma'am. They didn't even say I was under stand arrest. Stand on the sidewalk. This is a false arrest. They didn't even say I was under arrest. They have no right to arrest me. Let go of me. No! Come get my purse! No! Don't touch my purse! Don't touch my purse! Come get my purse, sweetheart! I'm scared to hurt me! In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! I come against these principalities and powers, this lie, this abuse! This abuse! Honey, come get my purse! I'm scared to touch my purse! No, ma'am, you're gonna stay right there. What are you scared of? No, she needs to get your purse! That's your mom's purse! I'm sorry? That's my purse. Okay. That's my purse. I am in charge of the situation. My purse is under arrest. I am not under arrest. No one arrested me. No one said I was under arrest for what? What is my cause? What is my cause? I've done nothing wrong. I've done nothing wrong. You can videotape. Just step back. No. I'm not doing anything. I'm not trespassing. You can't trespass in a public business. They rent the property. No, they can't. Sir, this is a lie. No, I'm not sitting in your car. Stop it! Ma'am, you're under arrest. Can I get her purse? Ma'am, no, you can't. She's under arrest. It's her property. You're not getting her purse. Stay back. As you can see from the video, Miss DiCarato is making the situation a heck of a lot worse. The police officers were simply doing their jobs. She was making it more difficult. Hence the reason for the interference charges as well. Congratulations, Miss DiCarato. You are a dumb criminal contestant of the day. And if you win, that's right. One of these bad boys will be coming to your residence for you to partake. That's right. No mask required to use, Ms. DiCarato, for you. It's, it's all yours. All right, I want to remind everybody about this evening, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. We're going to be going live on both Facebook and YouTube. Please join us. Immediately after that, we'll be doing our Patreon. So if you're a Patreon member, please join us. We'll be taking your calls and we'll stay as long as you guys are continuing to call in. So please join us. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you later tonight on Crime Talk Live.